Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Savannah. If you're new here and I do videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, today is one of my Tuesday book commentary videos, which is the whole reason I started my channel. So if you're new here and you like the content, I hope you subscribe and tune into future past videos and all the YouTube things. Forgot to put this away, I don't need that out. Um, so what I do when I do these book videos is I take notes while I'm reading and it's just kind of like little summaries of the book and oh, so that's what I was saying. I take notes while I'm reading and it's just kind of like summaries of what I'm reading. I don't give away all the details or everything that happens because otherwise these videos would be like four hours long and they're already about an hour usually. So, but I do little summaries and then I also kind of throw in thoughts and feelings as I'm reading as well and then kind of give an overall opinion at the end of the book. So if you haven't read one of these books yet, um, uh, and you want to read it before you get details, I would read it first and then come back. <laughs> um, but anyways, so today I'm reading the, this was just released at the end of September, beginning of October. Anyways, it's Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. Not totally sure if I'm saying uh, her um name correctly but this is i got the hardcover so this is the cover for it i think this was the barnes and noble exclusive edition like this pink version and then this is what it looks like without the cover on it's just black with green it's the green because envy is the main focus of this one so this is a spin-off of kind of like a spin-off expansion type situation of the throne um Kingdom of the Wicked series by Carrie. So that was a trilogy series. Um, it's Kingdom of the Wicked, Kingdom, where is that, my bookshelf? Kingdom of the Wicked, Kingdom of the Cursed, and Kingdom of the Feared. So it's Kingdom of the Wicked, Cursed, and Feared are the trilogy. And that focuses on Wrath and Amelia. And Wrath is like the king of the underworld. And he is like the main brother. So it's the seven brothers, the seven like deadly sin type situation. Um, and he's the main brother. He's like the king over all of them and such things. Um, and then this book was kind of a spin-off. You don't technically have to read the Kingdom of the Wicked series to read this book. There are like hints, or not even hints, but there are like mentions of things that kind of tie the books in together. So like there are mentions of, you know, like other characters and just situations that did happen not a lot just a couple of times and it's not like super detailed but if you didn't read the trilogy series you wouldn't know what exactly um, it's mentioning it's not a huge deal though like you can definitely read this as a standalone and call it a day um, if you didn't want to read the trilogy series but it does kind of tie in with that um, <clears throat> And then I believe this is supposed to just stay a standalone. Like there's not going to, going to be more books expanding on like Envy and Camilla, who's the main female character in this story. Um, but I do think the author has mentioned that she does eventually want to write at least like a book like this, at least on all of the brothers. So then there's still like gluttony, greed, lust, pride and sloth so there's five brothers left so she could end up having like five more books in the future um but that's just just so you're aware so thoughts before i go into this book and envy's colors are like the emerald green and camilla is like has silver hair and stuff so i'm going to kind of do a a mixture of like a green silver look today uh, but anyways, so <clears throat> thoughts before I started. I was just really curious to start the book because I did really like the trilogy series with Wrath and 
Amelia and all of that. Um, and she may do more books like this focusing on the other brothers, but like I don't think they're supposed to be trilogy series like Wrath's storyline is. It's supposed to kind of just be like a one book situation. Um, and then in this book she does like the the books have you know like a map in them like inside the cover like a lot of fantasy books do <coughs> um <clears throat> and she expanded the map so <clears throat> like if you look at the kingdom of the wicked's map and then look at this map it's expanded so the underworld has been expanded um starting with this book so we're kind of introduced to some more areas within within the underworld and some more creatures and things like that that we <clears throat> were maybe mentioned or weren't mentioned at all with the trilogy series so there's that so this book is set in a city called waverly green it's supposed to be like regency london <clears throat> And the main female character is Camilla. Um, and she is, well, a mortal, supposedly. Um, but there's Camilla. She has um, kind of like a signature look to her. She has like this silver hair and like silvery eyes. Um, she's only supposed to be like 25 or 28 or something like that so it's not silver hairs and you know like an older person it's her natural color and she's still like really young um so there's camilla and she is an artist so we have her and we just barely get introduced to her and then we kind of flash to what's going on with Envy. So apparently Envy at one point fell in love with like, well, I don't know if it was in love, but had like a thing with a mortal at one point in time. Um, and that somehow ended up ruining his court. That's kind of all we get to know at first, but like his court ever since he fell for that mortal has been like cursed. Um, and this mistake that he made puts his court in danger, which also puts his brother's courts in danger. Um, so some game master that's a fae is coming for Envy, and if Envy fails and his court falls, then the rest of the underworld will kind of go into chaos. Um, because, you know, like one of the demon princes falls, it kind of messes up how things go and like the flow of things and his court would have to be like absorbed into another sin's court and such things. So it just messes up a lot of stuff. Um, and we don't really get any other detail at first other than that and that if you look close at Envy's court you can kind of see that there's something wrong with how his courtiers are acting. They're like, they have something that they kind of describe as a brain fog. It's like they're not really fully there, they don't really know what's happening, they might not notice you or surroundings or anything like that. And Camilla's an artist. She owns her late father's gallery, which kind of rare for a woman to own a business in like this setting era type situation. Um, her mom left them when she was a kid. And then that's kind of, she was raised by her dad and then her dad like recently passed or whatever. And that's kind of all we get to know at first. And then she meets Envy <clears throat> and he's trying to get her to paint this painting that he needs. <clears throat> the game he's playing is he like gets clues from the game master and he has to solve them and he only gets three tries throughout the whole entire game. Not 
oh, not per clue, but like the whole game. He only gets three tries to solve the clue. Okay. Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. I'm gonna have to do a ton of editing to uh, cut out my coughing that I keep having here. But anyways, so, Envy <clears throat> gets clues from the Game Master to solve to be able to try to win the game. And his second clue leads him to Camilla. So he just met her. Camilla owns her father's art gallery. That's not the brush you usually do. But... <clears throat> okay. So there's some lord that lives in Waverly Green, where Camilla's from, that's trying to blackmail Camilla. Um, so her dad, when he got sick, she spent like all of the fortune that he had that was also supposed to, you know, be like her inheritance and such things. She spent it all to try and save him, you know, on doctors and medicines and all these things. And so it didn't work and he died. So then to try to make ends meet, um, she... Again, she's an artist, so she did a couple, like, she did a forfeit painting to try and, like, cover some costs and such things. And this guy, his name is, what is his name? Vexley. Terrible name, anyways. Um, he's trying to, well, he realized it was a forfeit and he blackmailed her with it. Um, and so he blackmailed her with it and the deal was she was supposed to only have to do so many more like forfeits or whatever and then he would get rid of the evidence and such things and she could go on her way but he keeps going back and like holding it over her head and such things and being like you know you have to continue to do this for me or whatever so <clears throat> envy his clue leads to her and she's now dealing with Envy coming to her to ask to paint this picture, which is like a hexed object, which she does not paint hexed objects for whatever reason. And so she's dealing with that and this Vex guy. Yeah, he only gets three tries throughout the whole entire game to try to solve the clues. My coughing and having to pause the video is like really throwing me off here. Um... So he only gets three tries. Camilla denied him the first time he waltzed in and tried to get her to paint the picture. So now he's kind of like, oh, this is going to be harder than I thought to convince this woman to, like, do what I want. And you can't use, uh, the players in the game cannot use magic to, like, get their way. So Envy can't use any of his magic. Um... Uh, and I was just really curious about what exactly the curse was on the court. Like, why, what happened, all those things. Because we don't really get to know all of the details. We get to kind of learn more about the shape the court is in and stuff. And how the courtiers are acting. But we don't really get to know much about the curse until pretty far into the book. Like, the last... 100, 150 pages is when we fully learn about, like, the curse, Camilla, and her family situation, and, like, all that stuff. So you have to read a majority of the book to, like, get any information. Um, so Camilla's mom left her and her dad when she was younger. I think she was supposed to be, like, 16 or something. It was when she was supposed to debut, you know, back in the... Day they used to have the debuts the girls reach a certain age and now they're kind of like out in society and all of those types of things mm -hmm. it's very the feeling of the waiver of green is very like Bridgerton vibes if you've read Bridgerton watched the show anything like that it's very Bridgerton um <laughs> so anyways but her mom, when she was there, would always tell stories about other realms and wicked princes, demons, goddesses, um, shapeshifters, vampires, the whole, the whole thing. 
So Camilla kind of knows about, you know, these fairy tales and other realms and all of these things. Um, so right when we learned this information, I started to speculate if the mom had been a part of this other realm. And that was why she ended up leaving to like protect her family maybe like my speculation was she was a part of this other realm she fled for whatever reason and then she was you know found out or something so she fled her family she made to then protect them that was my theory that I had going on. I don't point. take too many notes because like there's stuff happening but it's it's kind of like minor type stuff to where if I took notes on it like it would just be kind of pointless. So they're at a party that Bexley is throwing which is the Lord that is blackmailing Camilla remember. Um, so they're at his party and Camilla is planning to try and find the forgery while she's there because she knows that it's at his home somewhere. Um, and so her thought was like, while I'm here for this party, I'm going to try to sneak off, find this forgery, and get rid of it so he can't blackmail me anymore. It's kind of her thought process. Oh, I didn't get out. Hold on. So that's kind of her thought process while she's there. Um, and Envy is also at the party, and he's trying now to do a different strategy and try to, like, woo Camilla, you know, flirt with her or whatever, and get her to paint his painting that way. I said I think he'd have a difficult time achieving that because Camilla doesn't really seem to be the type to be wooed easily or even, like, even if, you know, she kind of is, you know, finds you attractive or whatever. Because she does find Envy attractive. She can kind of push past that. And she has a little bit of like a, you know, rough edge to her, whatever you want to call it. So she doesn't get pushed around very easily. Um, so at this party, she almost gets rid of the forgery. And then, of course, it doesn't work. And she was really close to it. So she was like... So close to being able to get out from under Bexley's thumb, but then she had to flee at the last minute and all of this. But during that time, Envy was able to learn that Bexley was kind of blackmailing her and, you know, that type of situation. So Envy does figure this out. Um... And at this point, also with just other things that have been said, I started to think that her mom was from the other realm and wasn't human. Um, Envy has said a couple times now, and I was only on chapter 9 at this point. So Envy has said a couple of times now. Envy has said a couple of times now that things are extreme or weird that Camilla is doing, um, considering she's human, which... I can't totally remember what exactly that was about, but he, you know, made comments that, like, this doesn't seem normal for a human. Um, it just made it seem to me that she's not human. So that's when I started to speculate about, well, I had already kind of speculated her mom wasn't human, but then that kind of confirmed my prior thoughts on the subject. Um... She has silver hair and eyes even. I mean, that's not like a normal human trait. And as the book's going on, there's a ton of tension between Envy and Camilla. It was really good. Like, so good. Such If you love the, like, tension trope, kind of like enemies to lover type situation or like forced proximity, they kind of had all of the above. It was very good. Um, I really was enjoying the setting that the book was in, and again, it was very, like, Bridgerton vibes. They're both very, like, physically attracted to each other. Envy even kind of thinks to himself that he's surprised by how enticed he is by her. Like, he's surprised he seems to be as attracted to her as he is, or that he seems to almost have, like, a hard time resisting her, because that's not normal for him. Um... 
And he's still continuing to try to get her to paint this painting he needs for his game. So he is still struggling with that. Um, but I figured at this point, I was like, she has to paint it soon because the story needs to progress because there's still how many more clues that he has to solve and everything to like beat the game if he wins and such things. So I figured that she had to paint it soon. Otherwise the story wouldn't be near as long as it was. Um, so like I said, Envy figured out that Vexley was blackmailing Camilla with that painting. So Envy stole the painting, but Vexley thinks Camilla did it, of course. So he's not happy. He's a pretty aggressive guy. Um, so he went and threatened Camilla, like, you give that painting back, blah, 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 I'll ruin you, whatever. And so Camilla goes to confront Envy. And Envy was immediately upset that she was, like, threatened and, like, Vexley harmed her or whatever. So he was about to go murder Vexley, like, right then and there, but Camilla stopped him. He was like, you can't murder him because if you do, uh, I'll lose this object that he has of my father's and then, you know, I'll have completely lost, you know, everything from my father, basically. And he really wanted me to have this object and I lost it to Vexley. He's like, okay, some, it's some type of key. Um, and he's like, okay, fine. He's like, I won't kill him so we can get this key back for you that Vexley has or whatever. So he doesn't kill him, but then also during this time when she went to confront Envy, Camilla met his brother Lust. Okay, I'm like dying, but we are going to attempt to finish this. So I was saying, Camilla met Lust, and his magic didn't affect her at all. Um, so this is just more proof that she's not a mortal or at least not fully mortal because she wouldn't be able to resist him like using his magic on her if she was mortal like she just wouldn't be there's this market in waverly green where there are fae and they sell like dark magic and objects to mortals and the fae in this book are either um Seely or they're unseely. So Seely are the light fae and they worship like the sun, spring, and Seely summer. Are the dark fae and they worship the moon, winter, and fall. So there's the two types of Faye. Okay, I'm back. It's a little bit later. I already finished my makeup. This video is going to be a disaster because I keep coughing. I just get like this dry, like little itchy feeling right here. But I don't even know where I left off. We're just going to try to like fly through the rest of the notes for this book because I am just like not able to talk very much. So. There's more to why Camilla won't paint a hexed object. It's not just that she doesn't want to paint it. Apparently, it's because if she paints a hexed object, it will actually appear, and then it can either grant power or immor and immortality or destroy immortals. Just kind of depends on like what the object is. But the point is, she can like bring an object to life that she paints if she like chooses to do so so that's why she doesn't want to paint the hexed object because it's like a evil object um and she also kind of mentions that she's worried about being dark and not good so something is definitely up with her family and i just really felt like i needed to know more um and i also noted here at this point in time i'm really enjoying the book and loving the setting it was in and i've been kind of in a book slump like a reading slump, like no matter how good the book is, I'm just like not wanting to pick it up, not wanting to read. But this week I actually was like able to pick it up and read and want to read and such things. So hopefully I'm getting out of that little slump that I was in. 
Um, so then Camilla gets attacked by one of the lords in the town that she lives in. And he wanted her locket that was from her mom. So it must be something to do with like the game. He had to have been, he was a part of the game. Um, there's no knowing how many players there are in the game. We know Envy is one, but there are also others. Um, so he was a part of it, obviously. And Camilla actually had to kill him to get away from him, which she was pretty traumatized by for a few minutes anyways. <laughs> um, so then Camilla and Envy actually get fake engaged to get out of being ruined in society. So like, because she had killed that Lord and then Envy had gotten someone, his second in command there, Alexi, to hurry up and like take the body away but then him and Camilla were alone and all of a sudden like these other guests that were um, there uh, showed up and in order to avoid Camilla's reputation being ruined they had to pretend that they were out there because they just got engaged um, so they could actually be alone together um, so he helped her after she murdered that guy and proposed to her to prevent people from saying they were being indecent alone together um, and then chapter 22 is the first spicy scene between Camilla and Envy. Um, and then there are a few more spicy scenes throughout, um, but it's a lot of, um, tension. Like it's not a, so this is the first spicy scene and then it's more tension before you get the next one. So it's kind of like that. You'll get one and then it's tension and then you'll get another one in tension and such things. Um. So then part of the deal of getting engaged and her not ruining her reputation was Camilla painting the object. So she finished painting it and the hexed throne came to life, obviously. And it actually spoke to Camilla in her mind and it took away her gift of painting and like the ability to bring paintings to life. And the only way she can get it back is if she now plays the game. She's not an individual player but she has to play to help envy to get her gift back um <clears throat> envy does not know this and he doesn't realize camilla knows about the game master and like the evilness of the game master and all of this stuff and he doesn't realize she's now a player um she just kind of goes along with it and continues to play it um like Envy has his reasons, like the clues are now saying she has to be included, so that's why he's including her, but he doesn't realize she's also playing because something was taken from her. Um, she also was not happy when she found out Envy was Envy, as in, you know, like he's a demon prince, <laughs> not a human. Um. But then the next clue brings them to House Sloth, and Envy doesn't know Camilla's not a player, like I said. Um, <clears throat> but she definitely, like, she knows about stuff. She has that ability. I was thinking at this point her mom also is Faye. Like, her mom has to be Faye. Um, just like the game master is a Faye. He's the king of the Unseelie court. Um, so then we get a little peek of at Envy's court and like the shape that they're in which is pretty rough so about two-thirds of the courts already has like their brain fog um so like they don't remember people they don't remember who they are it makes them see everyone as an enemy and he actually Envy ends up finding his good friend murdered um she murdered her husband and their triplets they had just had it was like devastating and then she killed herself because she all of a sudden had this like one second of realization and she killed herself. Um, so it's just really sad. And at this, he feels horrible. Like he feels like he's like the worst, you know, like ruler, prince, whatever. Um, but at this point we do find out that the piece that's missing that's caused them to be cursed is that they're missing this chalice that Envy is supposed to have that he no longer has. So there's that. Like I said, they have to go to House Sloth to get the next clue. But in order to enter the Sin Corridor, or the, you know, where the houses are, you have to walk through Sin Corridor first because the underworld has to sort you into, like, what house you would be best in, even if you don't stay or whatever. Um, so Camilla has to be tested and sorted into a house. I said, but she's able to easily brush off the magic, so she might not be put in any house at all. 
and we didn't actually figure out what house she was sorted into like we never got any information about that so I don't know I feel like she would end up being in house envy I guess if anything because that seems to be one of the sins that she does have pretty strongly but I don't know it doesn't I wish we would have gotten like a hint as to or were told what house they sorted her into if they were if the coroner was even able to sort her at all um <clears throat> So then they end up making it to house sloth and then I didn't take notes for a little bit just because it was like things were happening but not things that were important enough to take notes. Um, so at one point in time Camilla had slept with this hunter um, and he has something to do with her past and connection with the Unseelie King who is the game master. Um, and the Unseelie King slash game master whatever you want to call him his name is Lennox. L-E-N-N-O-X. Um, they also found the clue in House Sloth that brought them to some like nightmare goat human thing that was really deep um, underneath. I think they were un it was under House Sloth. Um, he was like speaking in riddles, but he told Camilla to say the name Prometheus. So she says this name um, without realizing and envy's like don't say that name that's the um vampire prince's name um but they all thought the vampire prince's name was zarus which that is a name he goes by but his like original name is prometheus so anyone that speaks his name ends up getting taken but we'll get there in a second so he told camilla the vampire prince's name and she's not really sure why um, and it was still unclear what Envy did to curse his court and why he needs to win the game. But it, whatever he did, it not only caused his court to have the mind fog, but he also can't access his wings anymore because without his court, there's not a lot of people fueling his sin. And because of that, he's pretty weak. So in order for him to keep up the biggest store of his strength as possible, he can't access his wings or anything like that because... He doesn't have anyone fueling him. Um, <clears throat> at this point, I noted I was really enjoying the book so far, and I was really loving like the setting and the storyline. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun that it had that like Bridgerton type twist. Um, I wish we could figure out Camilla and Envy's secret already, though. I had to go help with my daughter for a second. The lighting is also getting weird. The sun is peeking through. Anyways, I was just really wanting to find out Envy and Camilla's secrets um, just because I was just very curious at this point. Also, just as a side note, I had found quite a few typos and like grammatical things at this point um, in the book. So I thought that was kind of interesting and I was like, am I just reading these wrong and I'm, you know, mixing up things or are these like grammatical errors and typos through here? <laughs> I don't know, but I found some in mine. So then Camilla gets kidnapped because I said when you say the um, vampire prince's name, he takes you. So um, she was kidnapped. <clears throat> and also apparently no demons can go to Malice Island, which is where the vampires live. Um, so I was like, I don't know how Envy's going to help her. Um, also, whatever Camilla is, it's definitely not mortal. Like, it's finally officially confirmed at this point because instead of being appalled she has this like attraction to the prince that goes against her like she doesn't want to be attracted and in her mind she's fearful and everything but she can't overcome it like her body will be doing one thing even though in her mind she's like freaking out so that's interesting so then Envy finds out while well, Camilla's over there that the next clue says that they have to kill the current vampire prince and make a crimson eyed one, the new prince, um, which I guess is like his second in command. His name is Blade. Um, he's the only like crimson eyed person. And um, I believe, I don't know, I was kind of confused at this point in the book or at this little story section. I don't even know what you want details. But I believe based off what the book says that he, Blade, is a royal, but people just don't know it. I'm not totally sure. 
but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So they have to get him on the throne and kill Prometheus, Zarus, whatever you want to say. So then Envy, um, Blade helps him because Envy's second in command, his second hand guy, right hand guy there, his name is Alexi. He's a vampire and that's like his connection to the vampire court. And so with Alexi's help, they get a message to Blade and they kind of like team up together. And so Blade helps Envy get in to the vampire court and he has to fight Zarus. Like he challenges him and like that's his plan to be able to get their next clue. But Envy was really weak at this point already. So it's like, I don't know how he's going to continue to like solve these clues because he's getting like weaker and weaker as the book's going on. Um, but he does beat the prince, but he got pretty wounded, but he was healing and everything. Um, <clears throat> so then they were still waiting to see what the next clue was. And while they were waiting, um, Vexley, you know, that human, um, that was blackmailing Camilla, he also turns out to be a player in the game and he was at the vampire court. Um, and he tried to force Camilla to marry him and he was like about to force himself on her and Camilla we find out has some type of ability to kill people because she literally just kills him like he was like he had her shoved against the wall he was holding on to her arms and she like somehow electrocuted him um just through him touching her and she killed him but he had he had been hanging out with vampires um you know and doing stuff and so because they, he had a bunch of venom in his blood and like Camilla killing him, that somehow turned him into a vampire. I don't know if I noted that later because it's not super important, but like, really. So then I said, I knew it. We finally find out that Camilla is actually a fae that's posing as a human. Um, so she actually belongs to the fae. Um, so I said maybe her mom like ran away from the court and had a baby with a human and then maybe had to flee for Camilla's safety or the human man that Camilla claimed was her dad isn't actually her dad. So I said maybe it's one of those things. But anyways, but then we find out that Camilla and her mom actually left the court when Camilla was four. So she's full fae, no human blood. Um, so she's well over 100 years old. Um, so then I said, it's still unsure who her dad is. And I said, this is when I started to say, well, maybe Lennox himself is his, her dad. Like maybe Lennox, the game master, is Camilla's dad. So that was what I was positing at this point. Um, so then their next clue is to go to these like twin pillars that used to be a portal from the Fey world into the mortal world. Um, but they're below House Wrath at this point because Lennox was abusing the power of the portal and constantly going over and like abducting humans, torturing them, bringing them back to his court and torturing them. Like he was abusing the access with the portal. <clears throat> so then quite a bit of stuff happens, but I don't want to give away a bunch of the details. So, but they solved the last clue and win the game. And the second they win, they're transported to Lennox's court. <clears throat> And I was like, that's where the chapter ended. And I was like, we're about to find out Camilla's true history, identity, whatever is going on. And I said, I think she's way older than she even claimed earlier. And she definitely has a connection to Lennox. Like, I think she's way more than just over 100 years old. Like, I think she's quite a bit older than that. Um, but I said, and after the next chapter, I was like, I knew it. So Camilla is one of Lennox's children. So he has four kids in total. Camilla is one of the youngest. So there's her and her one younger brother. And then they have two older siblings. So she's kind of like in the middle. Um, Envy is devastated and heartbroken. He knew she was Faye, but he was thinking she was from the Seelie court, but she's actually from the Unseelie court. Um, so he's like really heartbroken and upset because she has this tie to this man that he's been like ranting about saying that ruined his life, ruined his core, is so evil. And it's like, that's her parent. 
And then he starts to kind of question if she was involved in the plot or knew that like his court was ruined because of her dad. Um, she didn't, but anyways. So he actually thought about giving up his one night rule. And we had a rule that like he won't sleep with anyone for more than one night, mainly because he doesn't want to like have his heart broken and fall for anybody. Like what happened with the human mortal that he had been with. Um, because he, he was starting to think he could actually have like something good in his life for once. So I felt really bad for him. I was like, oh, poor Envy. Um, and then also we find out, so the chalice that he lost, that he won the game to get back, is his court's memory chalice. So all of the courts, um, you know, Wrath's court, Lust, Greed, Glut, all of them, they have a memory chalice that they have to use every so many years because the demons aren't immortal, but they live long enough. Wrath and them are immortal and envy and stuff, but they're demons and their courts. They're not immortal. So they, but they live long enough to where they have to purge memories every so many years because otherwise they end up forgetting everything because it's like too much to contain. And so without that chalice, they hadn't been able to purge their memories and that's why they were like falling apart. Um, so that's what Envy is trying to get back, but Lennox doesn't give it back to him right away. Of course, there has to be a little bit of stuff that happens. So it turns out Lennox did like the whole entire game to get Camilla back to the court. She's been gone since she was four years old. So we did it to get her back. Um, so that's really sad. So then Lennox decides to punish Camilla, um, for not returning to the court sooner and all of these things. Um, by forcing her to paint a key and lock that ended up creating a portal to allow him access to Waverly Green because he didn't have access to mortals anymore. So she painted this stuff and it gave him access to Waverly Green. So then he starts to kill occupants there. So people that Camilla knows, she's friends with, she's acquaintances with, whatever. Um, and he... So Lennox is like bringing these people in and killing them. He, and he finally gives Envy the chalice. Um, but then Envy is like, I have to help Camilla. So he's like attempting to free Camilla and he's gonna have to kill Lennox to do it. Like there's no way he's not. And at this point, there was only about 30 pages left. So Envy does end up, end up killing Lennox with a little bit of Camilla's help. Like she does help him, but Envy does the final blow so Camilla doesn't have to. Um, and then Envy goes and he leaves right away and like leaves Camilla there. So she thinks that like, like he doesn't want anything to do with her. Um, but he had to leave immediately to restore his core. And it actually took quite a few days to even restore all of the memories. Um, but then once they do a majority of them, he finally goes back for Camilla. And the story ends with them like getting engaged. So like, you know, they have some time together and like these things and they get engaged and all of these things. So that was like the end of the book. It was kind of like a lot of things were happening because they were playing the game throughout the book. So it wasn't anything like it felt, you know, like boring or stretched out or slow or anything like that. It felt very well paced and like all of that kind of stuff but I will say a lot happened in just the last 100 pages which I feel like is very common and a lot of books are like that but I just do want to like throw that out there that I mean they finish the game break up Envy cures his court kills Lennox him and Camilla get back together get engaged and all that stuff in like the last 100 pages and we find out Envy's you know court's full secret and Camilla's whole situation so it was a lot um and the human had something to do with the chalice going missing she actually took it to the fake court and that's how Envy lost it in the first place if you're feeling like that's not adding up together <laughs> okay overall thoughts i really loved the book i think it was a great addition to the kingdom of the wicked series this is only set like i think only like a couple of months one two three months tops maybe after the kingdom of the wicked series ended so like wrath and amelia just like got married have only been established as king and queen for like a month or two 
So this is, you know, pretty soon after that, which I did like. Um, it's a standalone. You can read it without having read the others. However, there are a few connections to the previous trilogy that you won't understand if you haven't read it, but it's not that big of a deal, but there's, that is a note there. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed the storyline, even though I did guess Camilla was Faye, like, very early on in the book. But it was still had a lot of great twists and turns, even though you kind of do put the pieces together pretty fast. Um, because you definitely, like, you know, you feel like she's definitely not human, and then you do figure out she's Faye, but the other connections aren't revealed until later. Um, <clears throat> I will say there are quite a few typos and things throughout the book um, and mine. Like, I found a lot of typos, but I still did really enjoy it. Um... It is supposed to be a standalone, and I did note that I'm not sure if the author will do more books like these for the other brothers or not, but like in her author's note at the end, she did mention that she does want to do that, so I would expect one book like this probably for the rest of the brothers. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, I really enjoyed it. I liked getting to see Envy some more and like his different sides and getting to see him win the girl in a happy life because he's been, he's kind of just seen as like this player, this game player. He's like not serious, just likes to kind of like have flings and things like that. That's not really true. It was a mask he put on because it was the only way to try and like protect his court and figure things out like that. So it's just nice to see the other side of him. If I had to guess the next book I think the author will do, I would think it would be on their brother Pride, I don't know this um, connection. So I'll zoom in and show you the look and then I'm all done. So did a green look for Envy and then the silver for Camilla. I think it turned out pretty cute. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. So. I'll list all the makeup in the description and I'll see you guys next week um, with another video. But two weeks from now, the book I'm going to do is Mr. Darcy's Diary to have a little, a little break from all the um, like romanticies. So yeah, I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.